What's up, everybody? Welcome to a very, very special episode of Studio Insights. In this episode, we are going to take you deep, deep behind the scenes into a very special process that we have uh, that we use as a team with our clients. And it is how we come up with ideas to solve the problem that we're solving. What are the ideas to help people do something differently, to facilitate change, to train them, to reinforce training? And um, some of those things are theory based, some of those things like e learning or face to face thing, um, some of them are social learning, and then other things are on the job experimentation. So today's episode is very special because we are going to run our brainstorming workshop with you and expose you to something pretty special. So we hope that it inspires ideas and how you can do and serve your clients and the learners that you serve better. And yeah, take what resonates, make it your own. Um, so I guess to set the scene, a problem arises in an organization. That's normally why they're saying, hey, learning and development team, HR team, instructional designer, we need your help. We need to train staff in something. So here in Australia, something has happened recently enough where there's been something come out by the government around psychosocial hazards. So this is a big deal. I'm going to tell you what they are now by sharing my screen. And so psychosocial hazards happen in the workplace and they are relating to things like design or management of work, workplace interactions and behaviors, plant at the workplace and the work environment. Now, if there's psychosocial hazards playing out, there's a stress response in employees. And when it's frequent and prolonged or severe, it can result in psycho psychological harm or physical harm. So this looks like anxiety, depression, burnout, suicide, it can also lead to heart problems. So this is a pretty big deal. And basically the government's saying, hey, workplaces, you have a responsibility now, go do something about it. So at Bell Vista Studios, you know that we are very big on a human-centered approach to solving problems and making sure that we are solving the true problem. So we have a process that we run um, and that is our human-centered approach to instructional design. To learn more about it, we do have a playlist on YouTube around that, or you can look at our human-centered design playbook. You can join one of our cohorts, which is an eight-week blended learning experience where we've applied human-centered design, or you can check out the online course. That's if you want to learn it. Um, and what that allows us to do is something like this happens. There's a problem that needs solving, through our process, we come up with a success statement, which is basically, this is what success looks like if we solve this problem, who we're solving the problem for, and also the learning objectives. Now, for the purpose of this video, we're not gonna teach you how to do that. You actually have to pay us to do those sorts of things and get that um, sort of information from us or engage us to do it with you. But what we're going to do is we've actually got a success statement specific to psycho psychosocial hazards and we've got learning objectives. So these ones are legit. If a customer, an organization came to us and needed help with this, these success statements that we're going to show through the workshop and these learning objectives are the quality that we would put in front of a client and help create some sort of solution to move the needle or create change. Um, but specific to this time, it is about the ideas and we're focusing on when you have those learning objectives and before you go and write the content for whatever that might be in a storyboard or you're putting slides together, whatever it is, when we have our learning objectives, we run a brainstorming workshop. And so that's where we're at in the process, thinking about it. Um, and it's how do you come up with the types of interventions, artifacts, and support that will help you achieve those learning objectives for the audiences that have been defined. So this is our exact workshop. Victoria is going to facilitate it. Hannah and I will be the participants um, for her. 
Now, just prompting you, this is what we do with our clients. This exact workshop is what we run with our clients, no matter what the training or the problem that we're trying to solve is. And if you want to, you can engage us to do it with your organization as well. So now I will throw it over to you, Victoria. You may take the lead and I'm excited to see what comes from this. So we, Hannah and I just know nothing about this. We're just showing up. We've done no preparation. And yeah, let's see what the Belvista Studios team can bring to the world of Soco Social Hazards. Thank you, Kim. <laughs> um, I'm just going to share my screen. I see it. Thank you. Thank you. Look at us cuties. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't really prep an intro because, Kim, I knew that you would be <laughs> sharing <Yeah. laughs> with the solution on psychosocial psycho hazards. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get that word wrong 50 times in this. <laughs> um, we'll just call it PH. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, all right, so first of all, I want to thank you both for coming. Um, we have one hour booked together. Um, it is going to be rapid pace and it might feel like a little bit disjointed, but you guys don't really need to worry about that. Um, it's in the workshop is in two parts. So I st I'm going to start off by sharing some stimulus with you to get your creative juices flowing, and then we'll get into the activities after that. Um, I also want to preface it by saying that there's no wrong ideas, there's no right ideas, like every idea could lead to something great. Um, so feel free to share anything that comes into your mind. Um, the more ideas that we have, the better. Um, and yeah, we, all ideas are basically like equal and valid. So don't hold back. Um, the more we have, the better the solution can be in the end. So to get started, um, for this particular solution, we've actually identified that there's um, two audience groups. So there's employees and leaders. So I'm going to show you the success statements we created for employees and for leaders, um, and then we'll get into the stimulus. So this is the success statement for employees. So success is employees identifying, reporting, and seeking support in regards to psychosocial hazards and risks for themselves and others within the workplace. And then for leaders, success is leaders recognising psychosocial hazards and risks and undertaking their responsibilities in addressing them. They follow and lead the correct process to mitigate hazards and risks and support their employees to ensure a mentally healthy and productive workplace. Um, so for the purpose of this workshop, we are going to be focusing on the leaders. Um, with the idea that some of the ideas we come up with will be like usable and transferable for an employee solution as well. Mm -hmm. So time to get into <laughs> the stimulus. Um, so yeah, as you can see, we're starting with a blank canvas. Um, that's just to remind everyone that no solution has been identified yet. Um, and the stimulus that I'm about to show you can start like painting some ideas for what is possible. Um, for when we get into the activities. So I'm going to just um, like quickly flick through some stimulus for you guys to have a look at. So oh. get your creative caps planted <laughs> firmly on you. <laughs> so yeah, I'll just click through if you need like longer or if I go too quickly, just let me know. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I will be sharing some like little videos and stuff as well. This one doesn't have any sound, I don't think. Oh. Having some internet issues, but. All good. I don't know why I bothered to preload that when it didn't. <laughs> <laughs> These things happen.
see what I've found. You know, I'm an intern. <laughs> <laughs> Show me what it looks like to fight like a girl. <laughs> now throw like a girl. Aw. So do you think you just insulted your sister? No. I mean, yeah, insulted girls, but not my sister. My name is Dakota, and I'm 10 years old. Show me what it looks like to run like a girl. Throw like a girl. Fight like a girl. What does it mean to you when I say run like a girl? It means run fast as you can. picture. The man and the woman look a tad unhappy. However, rotate the picture around and they instantly cheer up. The, the ability to transform a bad mood into a good one is crucial in everyday life. In a study from the University of Miami, volunteers were asked to describe something bad that had happened in their life and then list one way in which they'd benefited from the experience. Some said they'd discovered what mattered in life or they'd found out who their real friends were, or they'd discovered an inner strength. This simple exercise made people feel happier, less stressed, and even had a positive effect on their health. So when something bad happens, ask yourself just one question. How did you benefit from the experience? Can't hear you, babe. You're on mute. <laughs> <laughs> Go again. Yep, you're good now. <laughs> <laughs> you can still see the screen, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, a few technical hiccups. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, good. Oh, it's the reality of life, mate. This yeah. stuff does actually happen in the workshop. So being able to adapt in the moment, not shit your pants. Yeah. <laughs> I'm shitting them a little. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so that was the stimulus for the workshop. So hopefully you're feeling inspired and cool. stimulated. Um, so first question. Um, so this is based off of our learning objectives. And our first mm -hmm. one is, how might we get leaders to proactively and reactively respond to psychosocial hazards and risks relating to design or management of work, workplace interactions and behaviours, plant at a workplace, and the work environment? And when you give your responses, I want you to follow on from each other by saying yes and. Okay. All right. Um... I think I'll start the um because it is like oh, for yourself and others is part of it it's like especially as a leader um there has to be some sort of empathy in there so mm -hmm. reflection questions reflection toolkits reflection opportunities around the workplace such as discussion cubes cards that sit on communal areas um things on the back of toilet doors that allow you to reflect, um, stickers that go on mirrors. Mm. 
Yes, and they have to be questions that prompt something different. So a change in behavior, an improvement that needs to be made. So it needs to prompt, this isn't quite working or it's not working in the way that it should or it could be better. What could it be? What could be done better in regards to those four dot points? Mm. Yes. yes. At, or you oh, go, Hannah. There you go. No, you no, go. no, go on. Go on. I've got it. I'll hold on to it. Uh, yes. And also getting leaders to like speak to their employees and make them feel comfortable to share how they're feeling. Cause then I think they could like notice things a little bit more. So whether it's like a team meeting or like one-on-one -on -one meeting that the leaders have with their team, just to let them know that they do care and that they're like, they're going to look out for things like that. Yes, and it's a, a kit that they can use that is generic enough that can allow them to assess the current situation against all four um, areas of the psychosocial hazards and take like a, a stock take of the current situation and as a team work out what they need to stop, start and keep doing. Mm. So a template of prompting leaders to hold that conversation, like a facilitator kit almost, um, mm. which is almost like a worksheet they can work through to reestablish better practices around these within their team, but also a feedback loop to the business, the area of the business that can mm. support them if it's out of their control and influence. Yes, and we could get employees to, even if it's like an anonymous, because they might not be open to sharing, but to mm. share the sort of like the things that do impact them negatively at work. So leaders have an idea of like what sort of things are playing out and they can like hear it from the employees themselves. Yes, and dedicated time for them to do this, whether it's the team meeting kit, mm. um, like, a lot of workplaces have like a take five that they already do. So it's yes and establishing it within that habit that already exists. So they're already maybe assessing for hazards in the workplace, the, mm. just communicating that these are new hazards that you need to pay attention to. Mm. Yes, and I'm wondering if there's like something online or like recorded that shows like the type of um claims that have been made that have mm. led to people like experiencing depression or like what the cause was so that leaders have like can stop it from happening before it happens by learning from like other organizations and other claims yes and stats and facts that communicate that so this is the end result and this is the cause of that. Mm. And this is what you can do differently um, to prevent it proactively from happening as well mm. as this is a reactive way to support it in the moment and then there has to be a call to action. Like if you're facing this in the moment, here's what you can do about it. Yeah. Yes, and that can be in the form of posters around the workplace, email campaigns, mm. um, little like two minute things at stand ups or toolbox talks or lunch and learns. Mm. Yes, and people may be open to like sharing through uh, like a video interview or podcast about things that they've experienced in the workplace and how it's impacted them so that leaders can build empathy for what it feels like when you go through something like that yes and interventions that support leaders to proactively um respond to each of these four things so really sharing mm. what they might look like um, in their team, in their work environment, in their operational environment as well. 
So mm. building awareness of what psychosocial hazards are and what they can do about them and how they can prevent them proactively from happening or mitigate, uh, what is it, minimizing it from happening um, mm. and enabling that to be part of their work processes on an ongoing basis. So it's like, is this a, a Monday morning thing that all, that they build the habit and there's a culture around leaders always doing this first thing on a Monday morning. And then there's like, yeah, how do you build it into their work habits and work environment mm. that they're always doing this, using this checklist to assess? Because I remember uh, like doing a mechanics course and they were like, um, oh, you always check the oil on the first of the month was what one of the students was mm. told by their parent. And then um, the mechanic said, yeah, but it's such a critical thing and the first of the month always changes and how do you know that you're going to be available to do that or remember to do it because yeah. it's such a long time so he said mm. what if it was just every monday before mm. you start your car you did it then mm. love that yes and providing leaders with support like it could be like uh the eap or like a psychologist or someone internal to the organization that can like coach them through what they're needing to respond to whether it's like helping them like personally deal with stuff that's going on or providing them with advice to help them Yes, and communicating all of the support that's available to them, mm -hmm. such as a guideline, a process, people you can speak to. Yes, and putting all of this support in like one place, like a hub or a page on the internet, so they know exactly where they need to go when they need support and they're not searching. Yes, and building awareness of all of this stuff through the places where people already hang out. So if it's on an intranet, if mm. it's in a newsletter, if it's in a, a, a forum that happens every month. So bringing it up through visuals, whether it's like Yammer posts or the Facebook equivalent. Um, yes, and incorporating what they need to do. So responding to psychosocial hazards in their role statement. So it's something that they're like is part of their job to do and it's not an additional thing. Yes, and coming up with communities of practice or opportunities for leaders mm -hmm. to speak with other leaders to educate, collaborate, share ideas so that from the ground up, they can help look out for things and proactively respond. And when they are in a reactive place of responding, they have someone that they feel comfortable to reach out to support support. Mm. Yes, and having a group of people, whatever that is, that goes out and supports and actually observes how the workplace is playing out and how it might be impacting or being impacted by psychosocial hazards. So being another mm. set of eyes to support mm. leaders to point out because they're in habit, they're in uh, like familiarity so another set of fresh eyes that can help point out what might be playing out to then enable that learner or sorry, the leader to take responsibility mm -hmm. for what needs to change. Yes. And having psychosocial like champions in the organization and they're the people that do go around and keep their eyes open and come up with like new support resources from the things that they see. And it might also be an opportunity for employees to reach out to them anonymously if they don't want to speak to their leader about something. Mm -hmm. Yes, and more, more opportunity for conversation to happen. Support mm -hmm. interventions like questions and 
um, quotes and tips that are just continuously fed through to the leader from the organization so they can continue an ongoing conversation with their team so that mm. it allows that dialogue it, um, to continue. It breaks down silos. It break down, breaks down taboo. It creates openness and trust through conversation. Mm. And then it becomes a living, breathing organism. Mm. I reckon we move on. Oh, mm. Okay. Thank you. That was a lot of ideas in there. Yeah, that was. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next one. How might we get leaders to execute on their obligations to identify psychosocial hazards assess the risks, select the appropriate risk control measures, and review and evaluate the controls of the psychosocial hazards. Um, and for your ideas for this one, I want you to frame them as questions. So what if, or could we? Mm. Yes, okay. Sorry, just before we get into it, I can't remember if we said it, but that text that's at the top that Vic's asking us to do, they're the learning objectives that we've identified. So now we're onto a second mm -hmm. learning objective and we're gonna do one more. Yes. Okay. Um... What if we created a worksheet that they followed step by step that guided them through the different stages from identifying to assessing and so on. What if we had a catchy slogan or acronym that just focused on the identify? What if we did a video campaign on um, I don't know whether it shows it playing out in an abstract industry or place and relates it back to their workplace. Mm. Um, like, I wonder if it's like, just to expand on that as an example, is like identify, like, so you want to cook dinner tonight and you've got your meal kit ready. Well, you identify these are the ingredients that are on the menu. Now you assess, do you have everything? Um, you select the ingredients in the order that the menu is or the recipe is telling you to. Um, you're continuously reviewing and evaluating because it says add salt to taste. So you're like mm -hmm. tasting it. Um, and then at the end, it says like, just like you do this thing for like cooking a meal, then this is what it might look like in your workplace. Mm. Could we create like a comic that shows like leaders going through those different steps, but make it like entertaining? What if we had leaders ask their team to hold them accountable to this new thing that they're responsible mm -hmm. for and communicate that they're new at doing it and they're not going to get it right. So they need the support of their team to help call them out. And this is what that would look like mm -hmm. with maybe tip sheets or like a checklist that the employee can do. So they have support mm -hmm. to support their leader and the leader is supported. Could they observe like a video of another leader following these steps and that leader like sharing their advice for what they're doing and like demonstrating what it looks like in the real world? And what if we had all of those, like there was the plants, there was the behaviours, like all the things that are psychosocial hazards. What if we had different scenarios playing out and it was like they click and reveal so they can explore it to see what might be playing out in the workplace and make, um, 
to build awareness or what if it becomes like this situation is playing out what do you do next and it's like a branching scenario or a video where they have to make choices and it's like that choose your own adventure so Mm -hmm. this is playing out do you see any do you identify any um psychosocial hazards in this situation they're clicking they're interacting they're circling something and they're going through that process through scenarios Mm. could we do that as an interactive video as well Mm -hmm. anything else yeah give us the silence for a moment there (laughs) if you don't mind thank you (laughs) What if we just, (laughs) you go, you go Kim. No, you go. Okay. Um, what if we just absolutely bombard them with what psychosocial hazards are just everywhere in the workplace. So it's Mm. showing up absolutely everywhere. So they don't have to think. And it Mm. might be through a poster. I don't know, it's printed on mugs, it's people talking about it, they need to see it absolutely everywhere. So instead of them having to think, is that one or not? It's just like, oh, that's one. And they're making we're helping that cognitive reducing the cognitive Mm. stress. And they just make association of I've seen that through a poster, someone's spoken about that 50 billion times, it's playing out right now in front of me. And I know what I need to do to assess the risk and the rest of the steps are easy. Mm. I think if we get the identify right, we're better supported through processes and stuff. Mm. I shouldn't make that assumption, but yeah. You go, Hannah. Um, Could we create like almost like Pokemon cards or trading cards where each card has like a different psychosocial hazard on it and then it gives like specific steps on how like how to assess the risk for that specific thing like risk Mm. control measures for like it's like a a card deck that they can use to go through if they notice something and then follow the steps and what if we had a um like the steps all out of order for a scenario playing out and they had Mm. to reorder it or they had to match it so this is playing out what would you do next and they're available and they have to choose them or choose their like um the appropriate risk control measure like there's normally there's a hierarchy of which ones are most effective so all of the possible risk control measures are sitting there but they actually have to choose for this particular for this particular psychosocial hazard i've identified i've assessed it And now this is the selection of control measure that I'm going to choose. And then the feedback Mm. is built in at each step, giving them like delayed feedback on how you're going, what's going, Mm. like how it plays out. And yeah. And then in terms of the last one, review and evaluate, there's like a timeline that plays out. So like immediately you've now like de-escalated this, and as a result of that, in a week, this is what that looks like. Over six weeks, what that looks like. And what if actually there was a timeline? So it's like those four areas that are psychosocial hazards. It's like, for example, if I just go to the behavioral one, um, it's like uh, an inappropriate comment once on a person looks like this. When it happens mm. multiple times, it looks like this when it happens over multiple periods of weeks or months it looks Mm. like this and then they get to see the consequences played out visually of Mm. what that can look like in terms of stressors and psychological harm Mm. 
could there be or could we create like a like an AI chatbot where you the leader can like type in the psychosocial hazard that they've noticed and then the chatbot like responds with the next steps of what they would mm. need to do. So it's like in the moment, this is what mm -hmm. you would need to do. And could we just really go overboard on supporting them to know what their obligations are? So mm. a big communication piece on communicating that, whether it's written, it's verbal, it's a continuous thing, not just said mm. once or once at each forum, but again, it's that continuous discussion on these are your obligations. This is what's expected of you so that mm. it's very clear to them and then mm. they can easily um, step up to execute. Mm. And what if for each of the, like identify, assess, select, review, they have opportunities to apply. So what does it look like in the real world? And what, what would they be accessing to, now that they've identified, what would they be using to, in the real world to assess? How do they access that? Um, it's on an intranet. It's a form that sits in this particular place in the workshop. Um, so they're actually playing it out. Could we create scenarios like real world scenarios to um like where you literally you know like a fire drill where it's like people do literal fire drills to prepare so could mm -hmm. we come up with like real world scenarios or games or um what do you call it like quests whether it's mm -hmm. online in a workshop or in the work environment mm. And what if we had uh, like a, an expert person that actually was able to support them with their obligations? So they've identified, they go through these steps, assess, select, they review. But what if someone is coming back and saying and reviewing and evaluating their obligations to help them build that um, mm -hmm. support system or those skills or the expectations and the quality that is needed? So if the leader makes a choice, they have a coach basically available to say, yes, like you did prevent it, but if next time you this played out, this might be something that could help you do it easier or mm -hmm. make it more effective or prevent it from happening in the, the first place. So giving them feedback on their real world thing that's played out. Mm. I'm thinking about there's like a we've done it before, Kim, and it was like the Everest simulation mm. where it's the two different teams versing each other. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering if like there could be some sort of simulation where like the leaders all do it together, but one leader is like the employee experiencing the psychosocial oh, yeah. acid and they get like a card like telling them like what they're experiencing and what's happening. And the leader has to like figure it out through like following the steps. So it's sort of like they need to like seek information from the leader pretending to be the employee. Yeah. Or like observe to like practice in a real world environment because I think they're really like effective, those activities. Yeah. And what if we communicated through stories, whether it's video, visuals, posters, mm -hmm. um, basically the consequences? So mm. what it looks like if there is a psychosocial hazard in this particular, I can't remember the things now, the behavior, the plant, the work environment. Um, so if you don't address it, if you're not proactive, this is what can play out. Um, and maybe have extremes. So there's like, this is the small scale of it. Um, and then, but this is what it could lead to if not addressed and maybe what if we showed examples of real world where it has played out, newspaper headlines, um, mm. to say this is closer than you think? Mm -hmm. And what if we communicated what happens to you as a leader if you don't execute on your obligations? I'm not sure what that mm. might be, um, but maybe 
it, you could end up in court. Maybe a life could be lost or mo multiple lives. Like what are the, what is the severity? Um, maybe you get performance managed, black mark against your name, um, lack of trust from your team, the, mm. the whole scale of consequences. What if we're communicating what that looks like if you mm. don't execute on your obligations? Okay, let's go move on. I feel like we, I know we haven't exhausted. I feel like we're about to get deeper into it, but yeah, <laughs> for the, the purpose of this video, people have stuff to go with. Um, our third and final objective, how might we get leaders to seek support from the resources available? Mm -hmm. And the prompt for this one is if leaders only have 10 seconds to seek the support. Mm. Whoa. Okay. Put a timer on Vic for this one. Let's literally do two minutes. <laughs> Let us know when we can go. Go. Uh, like a branded sticker for the campaign that has a QR code. And when they scan the QR code, all the resources come up. Love that. Uh, it's on the front page of their intranet or it's a home screen like button on their um, phone mm -hmm. or tablet or device that they use. Mm -hmm. It's programmed in as a speed dial on their um, mm -hmm. work phones. Their phone number for support is like the name of something like 555 help or whatever it is so that mm. you can just remember. Um, a poster with everything they need on it that they can put at their desk mm -hmm. or wherever they are. Telling them to just ask someone that's close around to them mm. and what they can say to have, to get that help. Mm. You could put the phone number like on a branded sticker. And they can be stuck everywhere. Um, I reckon send an email that's like the one stop shop, but it's literally like the name of the subject is like psychosocial hazard help. And mm. literally the body of the email is that as well. So all they have to go is not remember the email itself, but the purpose is just searching for that in their emails mm. and the help is there available. So it's using the keywords to help them seek support. Mm -hmm. If there's a chat bot, it's just one of the options that comes up automatically. Like, do you need help yeah. with this? Like, you know, when it's like, are you in emergency call triple zero? Like, mm. as opposed to, yeah, trying to remember what the number is for the police. That's I hear the alarm bell. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. A lot of good it. job. Oh, Welcome to this again. Um, sorry, I'm just going to stop. High five. Yes, Woo! Well Four. done, Hannah. <laughs> um, but yeah, thank you both for your participation. There is a lot of good stuff in there. Some of them mm. might be some fine tuning. My typing got a bit. <laughs> 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 um, yeah, I didn't really have a thing to end it, to be honest, but I don't know what we normally do at the end of the day. <laughs> if we thank just go into like, the next part of the process. But <laughs> Yeah, thank participants and tell them what their next involvement will be, is how we close out a brainstorming workshop. And then... I'm not sure what's <laughs> next yet for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> will you invite us back for ideas? <laughs> For future. My Please. involvement ends here, basically. <laughs> <laughs> well done. And well cut done. the video. No, I do. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I guess it's cutting back to, like, we would thank participants and we'd tell them about next steps. What we would do internally as a team there is we would then go through all of those ideas. And we didn't do all of the learning objectives, but we would select which ones we're moving forward based on ease and impact um, aligned to the success statement. And then from there, we'd have a list of things that we're creating, such as an email campaign. There's going to be an e-learning module that covers off these things. There's going to be posters that do these things. There's going to be a supervisor toolkit that does these things. And from there, we would map all of the content that we've gotten from our human-centered workshops 
basically we those allow us to extract all of the information that we need to be able to write a storyboard to be able to write content for posters we would then map that against all of them and then write and massage it and get it ready for a client review so that's kind of our instructional design process um and for the purpose of this video i guess like that's that's some of the ideas that our team have for just this one training problem or this one problem in the world. And we hope that it inspires you to think differently about how you can create a pattern interrupt to help someone be better at something, to help an organization solve something in their workplace. We hope that it inspires you to think differently about how you might come up with ideas, how you might rule out ideas, um, take something and put it into your toolkit. But I encourage you to like share this with other people in the industry to help them um, build their capability in terms of solving problems. I would recommend that you definitely check out our human-centered design cohort um, to come through and be trained on how to do our end-to-end -end process. And you've just done one little snippet, which is basically one coaching that we would do on this. But if you if this resonated, we teach you more of how to get the success statement, how to get the learning objectives. You can get the playbook, which allows you to just run with it. If you don't need coaching on it, just pick it up yourself and do it. Or if you're an organization that needs to do psychosocial training, if you're an organizational uh, organization that needs basically to solve problems in a more effective way, Belvis the Studios is your team. So you should definitely reach out to us and ask us to be part of it. We would be absolutely flattered, but we We are freaking exceptional at what we do. It would be a privilege to support teams. So yeah, thank you for watching. And until next time, uh, keep being awesome and watching our content and getting value from what we're doing and taking action on what resonates. What's up, awesome human? Thank you, thank you, thank you on behalf of myself and the Bell Vista Studios team for continuously choosing to learn with us. We really appreciate it. If the tips and the insights and the context resonate with you and you want to take your skills to the next level or you want to make your life way easier, you will love our Creator Hub. The Creator Hub is a place for people like you and us. Basically, it's the stuff that we use internally at Bell Vista Studios and then we just share it publicly with you. The Creator Hub is created by instructional designers for instructional designers. And what you'll love there at the moment is we've got a quiz could I be a better instructional designer that has so much tips in the feedback if you're interested in human-centered design or just taking your skills to the next level in terms of the solutions you're creating, the problems you want to solve. But in there as well, aren't we cute? That's us. Um, but we've got the coaching courses, freebies, give us gratitude, and also we've got some templates. And basically they're always around the lens of learning experience design, instructional design, and e-learning. So a human-centered design focus is very much what we're about at Bell Vista Studio. So putting your learners at the heart of a solution and creating something for their needs. So there's the human-centered design stuff, and then we've also got the business stuff. So this is the stuff they don't teach you about when you want to become a freelancer or a consultant in the instructional design world. So go check it out. The link is in the description. You can check out everything that is available for you. Thank you for choosing to learn with us. Continuously invest in your skills. You will be rewarded as an instructional designer. Share this stuff, share it with other people because when we are better instructional designers, we create better solutions that create better humans, that create a better world. So we have a very important role and I'm excited to be on this journey with you. Have an awesome day.